and Alaska and United are both playing to return their Boeing MAX 9 planes back to operations after that major incident that saw that door panel or window panel or plug panel pop off midair. The grounding is costing Alaska up to 150 million bucks, as we said earlier. CNBC reports that these flights could resume on Alaska as soon as Friday. Uh, as in tomorrow, the U.S. aviation regulator approved a set of final inspection criteria late Wednesday. United, which is the other major carrier that flies the same jet, says it will return to planes to service by next week. So uh, a lot happening in this industry. Uh, we're now joined by Anthony Chan, the former chief economist, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, for a little analysis on this. Uh, good to see you, my friend. Uh, this is kind of a weird story because we've had plane issues in the past. Um, we've had a crisis with Boeing in the, cra uh, in the past. This one feels very different. Uh, thankfully, nobody was hurt, but I, I think there's a different kind of pain that's happening, and that's confidence in the industry. What's happening here? Well, Phil, what's happening is that right now, even the CEOs of many of these uh, airlines are, are basically telling you that they're going to have to listen to what the regulators tell them, what the... Uh, uh, the companies that are building these planes, like Boeing, tell them. So they don't really have good certainty. And the bottom line is they probably will get less delivery in many cases than they otherwise expected. And that is going to hit earnings in an environment where the economy is strong. You saw the real GDP numbers for the fourth quarter very strong. That explains why airline demand is so high. Airlines are finally learning how to make money in the industry. But now they're going to be uh, sort of inundated with this supply issue with regard to the amount of planes that they have to be able to satisfy demand. All right. Now, in, in fairness, I think United has a little under 100 jets in Alaska, around 60 or so that are sort of impacted by this situation. I don't buy that taking 150 planes out of service when there's thousands, tens of thousands of planes crisscrossing this country every single day, that that's going to tank the industry. But I will say this, for Boeing, that's a bigger issue because there's a crisis of confidence and how their leadership has managed this particular crisis, or I guess got themselves into this crisis. There's going to be a lot of finger pointing going on. Boeing's going to struggle temporarily. But as we've seen with every single instance, our memory is very short. That's right. And that's going to be a real problem with regard to future production, because now regulators uh, and the government, of course, is going to be watching very, very closely, making it quite uncertain as to whether or not these deliveries will, in fact, take place according to schedule. And that's a problem for these airlines. And remember, Phil, it's not like they have a lot of choices. There are two major airline manufacturers. There's Airbus and Boeing. And both of them are running basically at full capacity. So there's not a lot of options out there. But the, 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 flip, side of, the flip side to all this is maybe this is a good thing. Maybe this is a great wake-up call where nobody got hurt. You've discovered some loose bolts. You've discovered perhaps some miscommunications or poor leadership. Whatever it might be, we have to have confidence that the FAA, Boeing, all the different suppliers and contractors can do a better job of communicating to make sure that, number one, this doesn't happen again, but most importantly, prevent any similar issue from ever happening, right? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, that is the same message that even the CEOs and the airlines are actually giving because they know the importance of confidence. So they're not upset with any of these delays or, or with the heightened observation they're all saying that they're going to depend on the FAA. They're going to depend on Boeing to do the right thing. They don't want to rush the process because the last thing they want is for the public to believe that somehow the airlines are putting pressure on either the FAA or Boeing to deliver planes that are not as safe as they should be. I, I know this is not a popular opinion, but sometimes I feel like the, the airline industry and the manufacturing industry gets, gets an unfair amount of scrutiny Tens of thousands of buses crashed last week that we don't report on. Tens of thousands of cars crashed with faulty something that we don't report on. We have one incident, and people are talking about, uh, you know, all these things that we have to do now to prevent something from happening. And I, I get safety is very, very important, but sometimes the media plays a big part of it 
and sort of stoking the, the unnecessary fear sometimes, do they not? No, that's absolutely correct, because you point out, even cars, what do we have? Uh, uh, almost 50,000 people that uh, die in cars, and you don't see any pressure out there to stop the production of cars. But airlines, because it is perceived to be a, a big thing, if you have an airline crash, you, you have one or two people or, or a handful of people that unfortunately get hurt and sometimes even uh, are killed. But in an airline, if you have a a 747 or a 737 and it falls from the sky and everybody dies, it certainly makes people a lot more nervous. So the regulators have to be aware that when the public gets in an airplane, they demand higher safety. And that is something that the airline CEOs understand, and that is something that the FAA understands, and we're going to have to live with it. Let's talk about the economics uh, real quick. Uh, the major airlines have said that uh, airfares are uh, moving slightly higher. Planes are full, as you mentioned earlier. Flight attendants, though, are on strike because they want more money. A lot of the pilots, uh, the unions, have negotiated higher wages over the past 12 months. Now it's the flight attendants' turn, right? Americans uh, in the middle of it, uh, Southwest, Alaska, I believe. So there are different groups now looking to say, hey, wait a minute, if the pilots are getting more money, we as flight attendants, and as some call it, you know, probably the first line of defense when it comes to safety on board, and we've seen that, um, with these incidents, they should get more money too. But the question is, how much more should they get and what can the airlines actually afford? Where do we go from this negotiation? Well, I think it's clear, Phil, that they are going to get more because uh, a lot of the pilots got more and the airline, the airline attendants are, are going to feel, the flight attendants are going to feel they also deserve more. So there's no question. But the good news, Phil, is that the airlines are learning to be a little bit more efficient. You heard one CEO today saying that the reason they're making more money is because of increased network optimization. That sounds like a code word, but all it means is that they're learning to take planes out of service when there's less demand and put them into service during the time slots that there's increased demand. They're learning how to do this. And therefore, other airlines are using different language, and they're saying that the load factor is higher, which is another way of saying less empty seats in these planes, therefore higher profitability. So if they continue along these lines, they will be able to pay more, and it shouldn't hurt their profits as much as if they just went back to their all normal operations and paid the workers more. They're being more efficient. It's going to help. Okay, so that's good for the industry, pay down their debt, charge Anthony Chan a bigger baggage fee. Excellent strategy. Uh, good to see you, my friend. Appreciate the analysis. Same here.